welcome to my channel, Notes from the Sewing Room. My name's Becky. Today's video is all about the Tilling the Buttons Lyra dress that I'm wearing. And I really can't wait to tell you how I've got on making the dress. I've been wanting to make it ever since it came out. So myself and Sally from The Secret Life of the Seamstress decided to come together and do a collaboration vlog. So that's basically today's video. So if that's something that does interest you, I would love it if you could press that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Oh, apologies, my Labrador Bentley has just decided to pop in. I don't know if he's gonna hop on. There he is. Yes, so today's video is all about the Lyra. I really can't wait to tell you how I got on making my dress and some alterations that I did along the way as well. And um, when you finish watching my video, it would also be amazing if you pop over to Sally's channel and see how she got on with her garment as well. I'm really, really excited about seeing what Sally made and her final dress. We've not chatted too much about the fabrics that we're using or the exact versions we're gonna be making. So I believe we've both done two completely different dresses, but I'm really looking forward to watching Sally's video as well. So it'd be great if you could check out her video um, after mine. Hi Becky, hi everyone, it's Sally here from Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all well. Thanks so much Becky for inviting me to be part of your channel again. It's been really fun making up the Lyra dress with you and I really like the fact that we've both gone for different versions of the pattern. I can't wait to see your finished version of the dress made up and see how you found the pattern as well. Just to give you a quick sneak peek of the fabric that I've used for my dress and the bottom of the skirt, you can probably tell which version of the pattern I went for. <laughs> So after you've finished watching Becky's video, I'd love it if you could pop over to my channel and see my finished version of the Lyra dress and watch my video reviewing the pattern and seeing all about how I found it. Um, and I really look forward to watching Becky's video as well. So thanks so much, Becky, for having me on your channel again. I look forward to making another video with you in the future. See you soon, bye. If you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing. So if that is something that just interests you, then um, you know, feel free to check out some of my other videos on my channel as well if you'd like to. So let's get to it. Um, you may have noticed I'm wearing my Lyra dress. So I decided to go for the version with the short sleeves and I've also gone for the version that's just above, above my knee. I'm going to put in some footage of me wearing the, dre the dress and kind of twirling about and that sort of thing. And I will try and do a few more close-ups during the video as well so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. Um, but before I kind of talk about how I've got on with the dress, I'll just talk a little bit kind of generally about the pattern. So if you are unfamiliar with the pattern, and I'm sure it's been around a little bit now and and Instagram has been inundated with pictures of like you know amazing versions of the Lyra so here is the pattern if you haven't seen it um there's a few different versions that you can make there's this gorgeous version here with the lovely ruffle detail on the bottom and then if I just turn it over you'll see that there's um, a couple of versions here and this is the version that I've decided to go for which is the short version to the knee and with a short sleeve so but I think there are you know a few different variations you could do there's there's different sleeve lengths so there's this longer sleeve uh, which is kind of gathered into the wrist there um, and you know you've got this option of adding on this tie belt or kind of doing your own thing so there's there's lots of different uh, variations I think that you could do with the Lyra to really make it your own so in terms of the sizes that it's actually available in it's available in two different size bands basically you've got the printed version and the PDF that are available in UK sizes 6 through to 24 and also in the PDF you've got the size 16 through to 34 I decided to go for the Tilling the Button size 2 to make my Lyra which is actually a little bit different to when I make other Tilly patterns because generally I'm a size 3 on the top at least and then if I'm making a skirt or something like that I tend to have to grade between a few different sizes because basically I'm kind of um, pear shaped so I'm kind of larger on the bottom than I am on my top half. But as usual um, Tilly gives a really good kind of guide to what the finished garment measurements are and everything inside the instruction booklet. So looking at the size 2 finished garment measurements, uh, the bust is 37 inches, the waist is 34 and a quarter inches and the finished hip measurement is 56 and a quarter. So my actual measurements are 32 bust, 28 waist and a 40 hip. So I felt like sizing down to the size 2 was going to work quite well for me. 
Now generally I have found that the size 2 has worked well for me, however I would say that this has never happened to me before but it's slightly tight just across there, I mean it's you know it's, it's wearable and I can sort of move about but it is slightly tight across there so I think if I open that button just there and wear it more kind of open um, on the collar I think that's probably going to make it a lot more comfortable for me and it just feels like I've got a bit of you know extra um, you know flexibility when I'm bending about and that sort of thing. Apart from that the straight size 2 has worked really well for me um, across the shoulders at the back around the arms here and also the length of the dress as well and also the skirt as well. Now I would say about the length of the dress I have added two inches onto the length that's because I'm quite tall I'm five foot ten and Tilly's patterns do tend to be drafted for someone that's a little bit more um, shorter than me or more petite than me so um yeah I have added two inches on but that's kind of standard for me with Tilly pattern so I you know I was confident that I actually needed to do that and adding on the two inches it still comes to just above my knee so I'm quite happy with um, how it's worked out lengthwise so how would you describe the Lyra dress I would describe the Lyra dress as being a kind of shirt dress that's kind of stylish quite comfortable well for me if I open that button there <laughs> And it's, you know, it, it's got some different features in it that just make it a little bit different from perhaps other dresses that I've got in my wardrobe for sure. I describe it as being quite modern. It's got quite a blousy bodice. So, you know, I've decided to size down because I didn't want it to be too loose um, around the top here. But, you know, if you did want a kind of looser garment, then of course you could size up or, you know, go for whichever version you would like to in the, in the sizing pack. Some bust darts in the bodice as well, so that kind of gives it a little bit of shape, which I really like. You have, of course, got the button opening down the front of the blouse, but that doesn't actually go all the way down into the skirt. The button placket finishes around the waist area, and then you've got a lovely gathered skirt on there. And then, of course, you've got the option to add the, the extra ruffle detail or not. I decided to actually leave that off. You have got the option of adding in pockets to the skirt. I decided to actually miss off the pockets. Now, the reason for that was a couple of things. One, I was really short on fabric because I only had two metres of fabric and the second reason was that because I didn't want any extra bulk basically around my, my hip area and I just felt like I could do without the pockets in this instance and um, yeah, I probably wasn't going to use them too much anyway in, in this kind of dress so I just decided to leave them off. Uh, one different thing about this dress compared to other dresses that I've made was the two-piece collar and collar stand. So I basically took my time with this. The um, instructions in the booklet that come with the pattern, whether you get the PDF or the printed version, I found were really, really good. Um, but also, if you have made the Rosa dress, I've actually not made the Tilly and the Buttons Rosa dress, but I have got the pattern and I kind of cross-checked the instructions and the collar is basically very similar on both dresses so if you have made the rosa then hopefully you'll be fine making the lyra collar collar stand if you haven't you know um made this one yet now for me actually doing the collar and the collar stand was really scary because it was not something that i've done before and i was really really nervous about it and to be honest the rest of the dress I kind of thought oh I'll be fine with that but I just I kept putting off doing doing the collar and the collar stand and I don't really know why I think it's just because you know sometimes you want to push yourself out of your comfort zone but equally you're a little bit nervous about it but in the end uh, I didn't really have anything to worry about it came together quite nicely I found there was a lot of easing needed um, particularly around the collar stand and I got myself a little bit confused about which bits of the pattern needed to be interfaced and which bits didn't and even though I was kind of confident when I'd iron, ironed on all my interfacing that I've got the right pieces actually when I was constructing the collar and the collar stand I was getting a little bit confused and if I'm honest I'm still not quite sure that I've done it correctly however it looks all right so that's good enough for me I think you know you can get a little bit hung up on these things and I know I certainly have in the past and I'd be like oh I'm not sure if I've done it right but I think life's too short 
looks all right, so there we are. I think if you were to look too closely to the underside of my collar stand, I might have a few little wrinkly bits in there. And I think because I've used a viscose fabric and um, I bought this fabric from Minerva and I bought it basically after seeing it on the Great British Sewing Bee. And this fabric's been around a lot. I've seen a lot of people make dresses in, in this um, fabric and uh, skirts and things like that. So I just felt like, I needed it <laughs> and I thought it was going to work well for the Lyra. I think generally it has worked well. I did find that it moved around a little bit on my sewing machine when I was um, putting it together and in particular I found it a little bit tricky when putting together the collar and the collar stand. I think because it's such a lightweight fabric I probably would have been better off adding a little bit more interfacing onto um, the, the extra bits of the collar of the collar stand that shouldn't have had interfacing on them because I found that the interfaced pieces actually sort of sat better, sewed up more, um, like not, they sewed up nicer or easier than um, the, the non-interfaced section. So I'm sure there's a reason that you have sort of interfaced bits and non-interfaced bits, but I'm rambling here. But generally um, it came together quite well you just really have to take your time if you are unfamiliar or you know inexperienced in putting together this type of collar collar stand but it definitely is worth it in the end and I'm really pleased with the kind of general results so I'm just going to move a little bit closer to the camera so you can see it I don't think that my pointy collar is absolutely perfect but it's kind of good enough for me to be honest I decided not to add buttons all the way up to the top of the collar just because I don't like things to be too to tie it around my neck. So I basically started my first button just here where my, my finger is. Um, I was planning on using some pretty green buttons that came off um, a cardigan of mine, which I recently got covered in hair dye. So I've had to um, get rid of my cardigan. It's no longer wearable, but I've cut off the buttons and I thought, yes, they're gonna work really well with this fabric. But I had a bit of a nightmare <laughs> with um, the buttonholes and the buttons. Now the buttonholes, fine, did those on my sewing machine, no problem. However, I measured the buttons and I thought, yes, that's fine. I did a test version on a little tiny bit of scrap fabric that I got left over. But my mistake was that I didn't actually interface my scrap of fabric when I tried doing the buttonhole and putting through my button. So that actually fitted okay because it was kind of softer and I was able to squeeze through the button. However, when I actually came to do the buttonholes on here and tried to put on my buttons that I wanted to use, I basically just couldn't get them through the holes. So I had to have a bit of a rethink and have a look in my button stash. I've got various jars with buttons in. And I came across these little tiny, I just come a little bit closer to the camera. So they're little heart buttons in orange. And I think they work really well with this fabric because we have got these orange splashes uh, of colour here on on the flowers so I thought that that worked well uh, and they worked through my buttonholes that I'd already sewed in and kind of cut through and whatnot so <laughs> I felt like that that was a win really. I found that this pattern kind of did push me out of my comfort zone because of the colour and just because I just felt like there was a few different things in this pattern that I wanted to try one of them being making my own belt. So rather than actually using the, um, you know, the idea that came with the pattern to kind of do uh, the little tie, I decided that I wanted to do my own thing. So I basically used the pattern piece for the the tie that comes with the with the booklet with with the pattern, and actually add an extra half onto the pattern piece for my size. And what I did then was I folded my piece of fabric wrong sides together basically long the long sides inwards if that makes sense and then i folded it over again to create a kind of fabric sandwich and then i've top stitched all the way around and added on a little tiny buckle so i'm just going to show you this on the camera so you can see it so hopefully you can see it there i've added on this lovely little round buckle type thing so it's the first time that i've made a little belt like this but i'm really happy with it and i've also decided to rather than having my belt kind of loose so it moves around so much i've added in some little bits of fabric on the side here 
just to hold it in place, which I'm quite happy with. So it's actually the first time that I've done anything like that. And I think generally for a first attempt, it's worked quite well. Overall, I'm really pleased with my dress. I'm pleased with the sleeve length. I think that worked out quite well. I've not actually got loads of room in those sleeves. And to be honest, if I was to make the dress again, then I would probably size out maybe slightly on the arms just because I mean, they're not, they're not too tight, but I probably would like a little bit more uh, wiggle room in there if I was honest. I mean, I can get my finger all the way around my arm, but I don't know, that's just personal preference, isn't it? I also think you could mix up this dress with the sleeves by perhaps adding on a different sleeve. So maybe a kind of poofy sleeve might work quite well, um, but you know, the world is your oyster, I guess, with that kind of thing. I do think this dress could look great in so many different types of fabric, different colorways of fabric, and you know much like any pattern i suppose you could look like you've got a range of different you know outfits in your wardrobe but actually you've used the same pattern for them the lyra pattern is described as being for improvers so i would definitely say that that's that's right basically i think if you've made a few dresses before and you're looking for that next step up then this is a good pattern to try if you are a beginner and you know you're looking to make your dress i'd probably recommend doing a few other patterns before you try this one basically just because you have got a few you know vaguely kind of tricky bits involved you've got the collar you've got the bust stars you've got the buttons down the front options obviously with the different skirt lengths and ruffles and that kind of thing so it's a, it's a great pattern but I definitely think that it's for more of a, a kind of intermediate sewist or you know someone that's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit experienced and you've made a few things before. I'm really looking forward to wearing my dress out and about. I've actually not had an opportunity to wear it as yet, but I'm thinking it's gonna look nice with a pair of flip-flops or a pair of sandals, maybe my Converse, something like that. And yeah, I'll just wear it when I'm out pushing the pram and yeah, just kind of out walking generally. Like maybe when I'm back in the office, I could wear it into the office with a blazer or something like that. So I think it's very versatile and you know, there's lots of opportunities to wear it to you know many different places. I would like to have a go at making the Lyra again in the future, although for me it was quite a time consuming project with one thing or another and I think that I'll probably have a little bit of a break before I decide to make another version but you know I feel like I've learned a lot making this pattern and you know that's that's amazing really so I think you know hopefully I'll have a go at doing this again in the future but I probably won't get around to doing it straight away so I hope you've enjoyed learning how I got on with my Lyra dress and if you've got any questions at all then feel free to leave me a comment below I do love to hear from you in the comment section so um, I'd love to know what you're working on at the minute this week or you know what plans you've got for this month in terms of sewing and of course if you've made the Lyra how you actually found it um, that would be amazing if you could uh, let me know that and you know if you've got any tips or tricks that I could potentially try in the future if I do have another go at making the Lyra. If you have enjoyed watching today's video I would love it if you could press that like button and um, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I'm really really over the moon with the amount of subscribers that I've, I've gained recently. Um, I've mentioned before that I've hit 5,000 subscribers and that's just amazing. I never ever thought that you know, so many people would enjoy watching my videos when I first started doing my channel. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so pleased. And you know, thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed already. So if you have enjoyed watching today as well, please do check out Sally's video over on the Secret Life of the Seamstress channel. And I know I'm certainly gonna be heading over there shortly and having a look at what she's put together. But until next time, I'll leave it there and say thank you so much for being with me today. It's been really nice to have you here and I'll see you soon. Bye.